Hi everyone. Lately, these last few weeks, I've been working on the Rose Gown um, 2.0 project, and that'll soon be coming out on this channel. But in the meantime, I thought I'd give you guys a quick tutorial on how to take an image that has these harsh lighting spots uh, with natural lighting in the forest, usually in the forest is where you get this problem, and how to salvage as much of that image as possible and get the best results. So we're going to be starting out here in Camera Raw. If you are working with an image that is not raw already, the setting will not open for you right away. Go ahead up to your filter. You'll see that little button right here. Then um, you're going to click Filter, then Camera Raw Filter, and you'll essentially get this exact same thing. It'll just be slightly less effective, but it'll be good enough. Okay, so here we are. We are in Camera Raw Filter, starting out with this image. And we're going to need to up the exposure quite a bit. It's quite low, but we're going to be doing things to kind of down the exposure on these hot spots we have here in the image. So we want to take this exposure up to about the right setting we want um, as fast as possible. So we're going to go to our highlights and we're going to down our highlights. As you can see, that kind of softens the harsh lighting. It's kind of HDRing our image and it's not having the same um, dimming of the color tone effect that downing our contrast is. So we can move our contrast back up. We don't have to take it quite this extreme. We can have a little bit of highlight in there still. Then we're going to take shadows and we can lighten those up a bit which kind of softens the light as well. With our whites and our blacks we're going to do a similar effect most likely. Actually, I'm going to up my whites just a little bit, I think, just to add, add a bit of that contrast back in. And so there we are. So we've made quite a bit of adjustment here um, right away. With our vibrance, we can just kind of pull it up to about the level we want, and then we can say open image. So I'm going to go ahead and get a quick version of this image without these effects done so that we can have something to compare to. So I'm going to make a new layer. So as you can see, all my changes are already in effect in this one. So we're actually going to just move these bars back to zero or the starting point, which is where they were. There we are. So I say open image, control A to select all, control C to copy, and then control V. So now we have our harsh image. I'm actually going to copy this. So I'm going to just drag it down to make a new copy. Then I can actually delete the background copy since there is a background copy. Now we can swap these layers. So we can now use this to see the changes we've made in our image so far. And we're going to go up to our image again and start doing some more work on it. So another great tool you can use to soften um, harsh shadows like this, or kind of help HDR a shot a little more to make it more clear, is go to Image, Adjustments, Shadows and Highlights. Now, once you open shadows and highlights, you might only see these top couple of bars and you might have to say show more options, which is this little checkbox down here, or it might be right there for you. And it's already going to make a bunch of adjustments to your image and you don't have to follow those at all. So I'm going to go ahead and take underneath shadows, my radius and move it this way because I've noticed um, in most cases, moving your radius this way gives you a much more um, natural shadow cast. We're going to down the amount a bit because we don't need it to be too intense here. And then with our tone, you can adjust up and down with that. And so that's just for your shadows. Like it says, this is shadows. We can move to highlights now and highlights are, they're uh, touchy. That's the best way I'll describe them. You don't need very much if you're going to use any at all. So we'll just up the amount from zero to something. As you can see, that already makes quite a bit of difference in kind of crushing our whites, our lights a little bit and making them bring more detail back in. 
You can adjust how much uh, lighting you want on the legs now. And we'll call that good. If you want, you can adjust midtones. Sometimes I tend to pick other ways of bringing shadow back in. In fact, I'm not going to do any of this. I, I'm not a huge fan of this tool right here. It's just a little bit temperamental. Okay, so if we preview, we started with this and we now have this. So we've got a pretty balanced image, I'd say, as far as lighting goes. And now we can actually start going back through this image and making adjustments to the way things are lit with a little more control. So we're going to say OK. And with that done, we're going to go ahead. Let's make another l copy of this. So let's just go ahead and say boop. And what we can do is make adjustments to this and then decide if we need to do more or less. And then you can do adjustment layers if you want down below. I'm not sure if I'll actually get to that step because I usually can do a pretty good controlled job of the top layer. So again, we can just do a quick peek at our images changes. We started with this super dark image. We've got these hot light spots on the legs and the dress and then this kind of bush section back here. So quite a change we have here. Quite a bit of change. Um, so with this image the way it is right now, I'm just going to do a little bit of quick color work to it. We're going to go up to Image, Adjustments, and let's go ahead and do Selective Color. This is my favorite tool. We've got our selective color here, and this little bar right here allows you to pick which color you're affecting. This doesn't necessarily mean you're adding this color in, but it's just what color you want to make changes to. Let's go ahead and start with reds, where it is. Maybe I feel like there's a tiny bit too much magenta in the reds. Like if I lighten that a bit, it just makes the flesh tones a little bit less hot. See if it was up there where it was. It's just a little bit magenta-y in her face. So we down that a bit. And that gives us a little more control over that. Maybe we could add a tiny bit of red back in. Just give it a little bit more of that red hue. And we could even down the yellows a little bit to differentiate our model from these bushes in the background. These are just choices I'm making. You can always go ahead and pick with your image depending on your circumstance with color. It really can depend on the image and on the color settings you're using. So here we go. We've done a little bit of work with um, reds, which I don't know if you've noticed, mostly affecting the model's skin here. So I backed those out a bit. Let's go to yellows. We have a ton of yellow in this image, whether or not you notice it. Um, a lot of this vegetation here in the background, in the foreground here, even this um, wood right here, and in the model's skin tones, we have yellow everywhere. Adjust our yellows, we're going to see some quick changes to that. We can even back them out a little bit if we feel like they're coming on a bit too strong. We can always put yellows back in using a different method later. So here, if I back it out quite a bit, it's just to look a little strange. You can go for that if you like. I'm just going to take it down quite a bit, but not all the way. So again, um, if you're unfamiliar with why things are changing the way they are in selective color, um, cyans and reds are always up against each other. So if you add cyans to an image, you're taking away reds. And when you take away cyans in a color, you're adding reds. And the same is true for magentas and greens, and yellows and blues. Then also, of course, blacks and whites. So that's how we're controlling the way these colors look in this image. We're taking our yellows and saying, let's see, I want to down the yellow out of the yellow a little bit. So I'm adding some blues to it to neutralize it. So there we are with that. Let's go ahead and go to a next one. Actually, I might go back to red now that I've done some changes to the yellows. Add a little bit, maybe down, 
down the reds a bit. I'm just kind of neutralizing the colors in this shot a bit. There's a lot of brightness that comes out of the HDRing we did before, so we're kind of bringing it back to Earth. So with those changes, let's go to our... How about our whites? Or actually our magentas. One, that's another thing we can affect here. This dress is probably like the perfect shade of magenta. Yeah, look at that. So we can do a lot of effects. Like if I wanted, I could make the dress red. Um, I could make it a lot more magenta. I'm going to go ahead and down this a bit. You can also add some blacks back into it if you need to, depending on if it gets a bit faded looking. That's good. So let's go ahead and go to our whites now, and we're going to start adjusting our neutrals. So we can kind of add a little bit of atmosphere into an image um, using our whites, neutrals, and blacks to kind of set tones. So I'm going to go ahead into the whites, and I'm just going to adjust yellows and see what happens. As you can see, these bright spots in the background and the legs get affected quite a bit. Just take a look at that. Maybe I'll add a tiny bit of red. I usually don't add cyans or blues to whites very often just because they kind of make things look a little strange. But I do like adding a little bit of reds and yellows to kind of warm an image up. So we went ahead and did that. Neutrals, let's go ahead and just see. We'll see here. That's kind of pretty. Adding a little bit of yellows to our neutrals to kind of warm the whole image up. We add a tad bit of the reds to that as well. And then we'll go to our blacks. Can kind of change the way the color grading looks. Intensifying the blacks using a little bit of magenta and cyan. Maybe down the yellows just a tiny bit. Add a little softness back into the blacks using blues. So that's looking good. Let's go ahead and say okay. So we actually made quite a bit of changes here just using one tool. And you can actually go ahead and use Selective Color up here as a layer instead if you like. And you do that by going down and see you see this little half, half and half circle. Click that. And there is, let's see, Selective Color is actually right there down at the bottom. So you just click that and it would create this Selective Color layer in which you can go here and then you use this bar up here to do your adjustments. But we went ahead and just did this to our image and now we're going to go ahead and start doing some burning and dodging on this image to kind of add a little bit more into it. And then after I think that, I think we're probably pretty done with it. So I'll just get rid of this. We're back on background copy two. If we want, we can also just make a quick copy of this to have on hand. There we go. So we have background copy three now. And if we go ahead and look, we made amazing change to this image and we've got some coloration that looks pretty good here. It doesn't feel super forced. It's amazing thing about raw images. They hold so much data. Like most of your whites, if you're using the right kinds of cameras, are not going to be blown out if you have to work with them in post. So here we are with background copy three. Let's go ahead and just start using our dodge and burn tools now. So I'm going to go ahead and grab our burn tool and just maybe make a tiny bit of soft vignetting. We have our, it looks like our midtones selected. I'll go ahead and start with those. Um, and we've got exposure 26. Uh, let's bring that down a bit. I like to have a little bit more control. So we're at 15. And as you can see, we can create very quick vignetting with this if we like. So there we go. So we just added a few strokes in here. I just kind of moved it around this area and down here where I thought it could be a little bit darker in the image. I want to leave this area up here alone because it just seems like a very natural bright point in the image. So we're going to go ahead and leave that. You remember we're kind of adding a bit of shadow back into this image since we had to do so much adjustments to make the um, lighting brighten up without over brightening spots. So there we are. 
Now, I could use the dodge tool as well, or I could even go up here and click to the shadows tool. Make these spots a little darker. That's kind of fun, but I actually don't think it's necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those out. Now, if I want to use the dodge tool, I just go in here, click on the dodge tool, and do the exact same thing. Maybe lower this quite a bit. And I'm not sure if I'm really going to go ahead and actually use the dodge tool for my image. You can make that assessment with your own as well. I could just kind of add some light swoops in here. And it's not necessary, really. Maybe just a little bit. Or I'll make my brush a bit bigger. That's okay. So I just did a little bit of dodging right up here around the upper part of the body to kind of focus it in on the head a bit. And so I think that's our finished image. I mean, we have taken this image quite far. We started down here with this super dark, brightly lit in spots for a shot, just kind of natural lighting, didn't really have anything for bounce and such. And we went ahead and did a quick brightening job um, using kind of some HDRing techniques you can do in post with your shadows and highlights and your camera raw filter. Then we got to this after we did selective color to kind of bring in our color tones again and just kind of determine what we really wanted to be popping in the image. And with a little bit of um, dodging and burning here, we've got our finished image that feels fairly naturally lit. Thank you for watching. Go ahead and subscribe for more videos to come. We're going to have a super exciting project coming out soon, our Rose Ground 2.0 project. And let me know if you have any questions or comments below.